Um... This one's wife. I have health problems too, you know. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Anything you can be, I can be greater. Sooner or later, I'm greater than you. Song from Doris Day and Robert Goulet, which you probably are familiar with, and encapsulates the one-upmanship that is often found with the narcissist. I've got a television like that, but mine's better. That pronouncement may well be made by a narcissist, triangulating you with your television. You've proudly demonstrated that you've bought a new 72-inch television. It's a smart TV. And the narcissist, upon walking into your house, notices it. Rather than say, great television, I've got one similar, or just simply saying, really like your television, the narcissist has to give you a backhanded compliment, which is, good television, I've got one like that, but mine's better. Immediately putting you down and advancing their interests. This is done to provoke a reaction from you in order to ensure that you're brought under control and that fuel is obtained from you. You have got flu. The narcissist has got double pneumonia. As I've explained before, you went on holiday to Tenerife, they went on holiday to Elevenerife. You have a forehead, the narcissist has a five head. The narcissist always has to go one better than you because... The narcissist cannot allow you to be perceived as superior because the narcissist has to be seen as being superior. Therefore, whatever you've got, the narcissist has got something but better than. Wherever you've been, the narcissist has been to somewhere that's better than where you have been. Whatever you have done, the narcissist has exceeded it. You scored three goals, the narcissist scored four. You ran the 100 metres in 13 seconds, they did it in 12.5 seconds. You're not feeling particularly well, they are at death's door. You broke your little finger, they severed their left arm. Whatever it might be, the narcissist will seek to outgun you, to one-upmanship with you. Often, this is a complete porky pie, that they haven't got a television that's better than yours, that they didn't sever their arm, indeed you can see that it's there. Sometimes the truth will be used that they have undertaken an achievement which is superior to yours, but rather than allow you to receive praise and bask in your moment, the narcissist must always overshadow. The narcissist must always seek to steal that thunder. Because the suggestion that somebody else is better, or worse off in certain instances, dependent upon context, means that the narcissist's sense of superiority is being threatened, which leads to a threat to control. The narcissist cannot have that, and therefore the narcissism immediately girds its loins, cranks into action to ensure that the narcissist is motivated to point out that they've suffered something worse than you have, therefore they should receive more sympathy than you, or that they have done something superior to what you have done so that they deserve more praise than you. Once again, the spotlight is removed from them and placed removed from you rather and placed firmly upon them. And we have a classic example of this one's wife engaging in all of this. As we know, the royal family has had some health difficulties just recently. The Princess of Wales, elegant and fragrant, has found herself in hospital having abdominal surgery. She's on the mend. Great news. King Charles had an issue with his prostate and has had a cancer diagnosis. That has garnered a lot of attention a lot of support, admiration and sympathy from various sections around the world. This one's wife can't stand it, and as previously reported, her pathetic attempt to shift the spotlight back onto her was to drive around Montecicchio, or at least release photographs of her driving around Montecicchio, looking like a child behind the wheel of a Range Rover. Richter's grin plastered on face while the world just shook its head and said, Jesus Christ, she is just so thirsty for fuel, isn't she? But it doesn't stop there. 
Oh no. Courtesy of Hello. Yes, another supine PR publication whereby Melanie McLeod, hey, there can only be one, announces the British royal family started the year in an unexpected way by opening up about their unfortunate ill health. Princess Kate was admitted to the London Clinic for planned abdominal surgery earlier this year. Now the royal is recovering from her Windsor-based home with Prince William and their three children. William is only taking on small public engagements so he can care for Kate and their children and aides have said the couple will not travel overseas in the coming months. King Charles underwent treatment for an enlarged prostate in January at the London Clinic, where his daughter-in-law underwent abdominal surgery. However, it was announced earlier this week that the King has been diagnosed with a form of cancer. His Majesty's cancer was diagnosed during his prostate procedure, with tests identifying cancer. Is this a competition to see how many times you can get the word cancer into a paragraph? We're then told about Prince Harry flying back, but then... Princess Beatrice has got health problems as well. The late Queen's granddaughter was identified as having dyslexia at the age of seven. She received specialist help and support from the Helen Arkell Centre throughout school and went on to become the charity's patron in 2013. I would not have been able to achieve my academic results without the support I received from the centre, said Beatrice, Beatrice rather, who passed eight GCSEs, three A-levels and graduated with a 2-1 in history and the history of ideas from Goldsmiths College, London. Princess Eugenie has apparently had some health issues also. She's been very open about her scoliosis diagnosis. At the age of 12, she was told she would have to have life-changing surgery to fix the curvature of her spine. Two metal rods were inserted along her back and two one-and-a-half-inch screws were fixed to her neck during the eight-hour procedure. Eugenie spent three days in intensive care, followed by a week on a ward and six days in a wheelchair before she was able to walk again. She actually showed off the scars on her wedding day in October 2018, choosing to wear a gown that had an open back. Lady Louise Windsor. The Duchess of Edinburgh has spoken openly about how her daughter, Louise Twenty, had sight problems as a child. Louise, who was born premature, used to suffer from strabismus, a condition whereby a person cannot align both eyes simultaneously. Premature babies can often have squints because the eyes are the last thing in the baby package to be really be finalised, Sophie told the Sunday Express. Her squint was quite profound when she was tiny, and it takes time to correct it. You've got to make sure one eye doesn't become more dominant than the other, but she's fine now. Her eyesight is perfect. Mike Tyndall's family history. Mike's dad, Philip, sadly suffers from Parkinson's, and in an interview with Good Morning Britain, the retired rugby star opened up about his dad's battle. Raising awareness of the condition for the charity Cure Parkinson's, Mike said, it's a nightmare disease. There are over 40 different symptoms of what Parkinson's can look like. The research that has come out says how many people feel that they are drunk. People can suddenly freeze in the middle of the street and you might upset somebody walking behind you. They just don't get it. They don't understand that could be part of it. So that's the difficult part of it. Reference is also made to Princess Diana, who is Diana, of course, Princess of Wales, and that related to her eating disorder, bulimia. Princess Charlene of Monaco spent much of 2021 in South Africa due to an ear, nose and throat infection. She reportedly underwent surgery in mid-May 2021. Crown Prince Victoria of Sweden suffered from anorexia as a teenager. Crown Princess Meta Marit of Norway suffers from a rare chronic lung disease. So we have a roll call of various members of royalty, British, Norwegian, Swedish, and from Monaco, detailing the various problems, including Diana, who obviously is no longer alive. Many of these are fairly serious conditions, from King Charles's cancer diagnosis to Eugenie having two metal rods inserted along the back, quite the procedure. Lung conditions, squinting eyesight. But of course, it wouldn't be complete without a certain somebody having to join in. I've got a health condition too, you know. Talk about me. Ah, what is it, your royal beigeness? Perhaps a fractured 
eyelash that's causing the problem? Hmm? Could it be a perforated earlobe that is causing you to need this attention once again? I dare say it's not the case that anybody mentions that you've got narcissistic personality disorder. No. According to Hello, the Duchess of Sussex has always been refreshingly open about her mental health struggles, i.e. using them as a pity play. But did you know Prince Harry's wife also used to suffer from... What could it be? Irritable bowel syndrome? Shit hair syndrome? Bronzer addiction? Well, we're going to find out. Apparently, she suffered from terrible migraines. Hmm. I used to have debil debilitating migraines. An acupuncture in Eastern medicine absolutely changed my life, this one's wife told the chalk board. Migraine-free living is a game-changer, and I have been a long-time believer in acupuncture. Now, migraines are debilitating. Those that suffer from them really do suffer from them. However, it's typical of this one's wife that at the end of the day, whilst they can be debilitating, it's not life-threatening. And, of course, she has to be included in this roll call of royal ailments, that she can't be missed out, that she has to receive some sympathy because she used to have migraines. Once again, the fact is that there are various members of royal families who've got health issues, some which are current, but through the PR puff piece, this one's wife has to make it all about her. It could have just been a piece about Prince Charles, King Charles rather, and also the Princess of Wales, because those are two individuals who've got current health issues. But oh no, it's really got to be about this one's wife and demonstrating to the world that she once had some migraines. She may not have done. It may have been a revision of history. She may have had migraines and then brings up the past by way of a pity play. But remember, because she's a narcissist, reference is made to this in a PR puff piece publication in order to take attention away from the current tra uh, travails of King Charles and the Princess of Wales and to make it all about this one's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.